In this video, we will continue our survey of modern programmable logic devices with large FPGAs from Xilinx, including the Arctic 7, Kentex 7, and the Vertex 7, and the Kentex and Vertex Ultrascale device families. We will again use the programmable logic device selection criteria we established earlier to evaluate these devices. To reiterate, there are 11 criteria. Size or logic density, which is the amount of logic in system gates, LEs, slices, or ALMs. Cost per logic gate. Speed, or the maximum clock frequency. Power consumption, both static and dynamic. Reprogrammability, or the configuration memory type. Cost per I.O. or I.O. density. Hard IP available on chip, which includes memory, DSP blocks, transceivers, etc. Deterministic timing, where the timing is consistent in every implementation. Reliability, measured by the fit rate. Endurance, or the number of programming cycles and years of retention and design and data security. Here's a portion of the Xilinx 7 series product selection guide providing an overview of the Arctic 7 mid-range FPGA. At this stage of development, the FPGA selection process has become so bewildering that the vendors are producing selection guides in addition to the data sheets and user's guides. The Arctic 7 has reprogrammable SRM configuration which requires an external non-volatile memory, usually a flash memory, to load the configuration at power-up. The delay before the device becomes active is several milliseconds. The size of these devices goes to 215,000 logic cells. This is sufficient to build a large 32-bit CPU on the FPGA. Speed is limited to 628 MHz on clock buffers and a 1412 MHz toggle frequency which is much faster than previous devices. Transceivers now run to 6.6 .6 gigabits per second. Maximum static power draw is between 48 and 328 milliamps at one volt, depending on part size. Dynamic power is not specified. Power estimation tools are used to determine this now. This device has up to 500 I.O. pins, a 400 to 1 ratio of logic cells to I.O. There are 36 supported I.O. standards. Hard IP blocks have been added, including RAM blocks, clock management tiles with phase lock loops, DSP slices, PCIe transceivers, and even an analog to digital converter. There's also a DDR3 interface that runs at 1,066 megabits per second. Here's a portion of the Xilinx 7 Series product selection guide providing an overview of the Kentex 7 large FPGA. The Kentex 7 has reprogrammable SRAM configuration, which requires an external non-volatile memory to load the configuration at power up. The size of these devices goes to 477,000 logic cells, twice as large as the Arctic 7. The speed is limited to 741 megahertz on clock buffers and an 1818 megahertz toggle frequency, which is much faster than previous devices. Transceivers now run to 12.5 gigabits per second. The maximum static power draw is between 201 and 1080 milliamps at one volt, depending on the part size. Dynamic power is not specified. Power estimation tools are used to determine this now. This device has up to 500 I.O. pins, almost a 1,000 to 1 ratio of logic cells to I.O. There are 36 supported I.O. standards. Hard IP blocks are the same as the Arctic 7, including RAM blocks, clock management tiles with phase lock loops, DSP slices, PCIe transceivers, and an analog to digital converter. There's also a DDR3 interface that runs at 1,866 megabits per second. Here's a portion of the Xilinx 7 series product selection guide providing an overview of the Vertex 7 large FPDA. The Vertex 7 has reprogrammable SRAM configuration, which requires an external non-volatile memory to load the configuration at power-up. The size of these devices goes to almost 2 million logic cells four times as large as the Kintec 7. 
Speed is limited to 741 megahertz on clock buffers and in 1818 megahertz toggle frequency, which is much faster than previous devices. Transceivers now run to 28.05 gigabits per second. Maximum static power draw is between 1012 and 3756 milliamps at one volt, depending on part size. Dynamic power is not specified. Power estimation tools are used to determine this now. These devices consume up to a range of 100 watts, so heat sinks are often necessary. This device has up to 1100 I.O. pins, almost a 2000 to 1 ratio of logic cells to I.O. There are 36 supported I.O. standards. Hard IP blocks are the same as Arctic 7, including RAM blocks, Clock management tiles with phase lock loops, DSP slices, PCIe transceivers, and an analog to digital converter. There's also a DDR3 interface that runs at 1866 megabits per second. Here's a simplified diagram of the Series 7 slice, which is the same as the slice in the Spartan 6. It's not a big surprise that it is the same, given the time and effort that designers have put into optimizing the logic cell. Once they find something that works, they tend to repeat it. It is based on four six input LUTs and eight flip flops. It can create one single bit full adder per LUT and each LUT can become a 32 bit shift register. Here's a portion of the Xilinx Ultrascale product selection guide providing an overview of the Kentex Ultrascale large FPGA. The Kentex Ultrascale has a reprogrammable SRAM configuration which requires an external non-volatile memory to load the configuration at power-up. The size of these devices goes to 1.4 million logic cells. Speed is limited to 850 megahertz on clock buffers, which is faster than previous devices. Transceivers run up to 16.3 gigabits per second. The maximum static power draw is between 1097 and 3,181 milliamps at one volt, depending on part size. Dynamic power is not specified. Power estimation tools are used to determine this now. This device has up to 676 I.O. pins, almost a 2,001 ratio of logic cells to I.O. There are 41 supported I.O. standards. Hard IP blocks are the same as the 7 series, with a notable addition of the 100 gigabit Ethernet interface. There's also a DDR4 interface that runs at 2400 megabits per second. Everything is bigger and faster in Ultrascale. Here's a portion of the Xilinx Ultrascale product selection guide providing an overview of the Vertex Ultrascale Large FPGA. The Vertex Ultrascale has reprogrammable SRAM configuration which requires an external non-volatile memory to load the configuration at power up. The size of these devices goes to over 5 million logic cells two times as large as the Kintex Ultrascale. Speed is limited to 850 megahertz on clock buffers. Transceivers now run to 30.5 gigabits per second with aggregate bandwidth to an amazing 3.66 terabits per second. The maximum static power draw is between 1581 and 7988 milliamps at one volt, depending on part size. Dynamic power is not specified. Power estimation tools are used to determine this now. These devices consume up to the range of 100 watts, so heat sinks are often necessary. This device has up to 1400 I.O. pins, almost a 4,000 to 1 ratio of logic cells to I.O. There are 36 supported I.O. standards. Hard IP blocks are the same as the 7 series with the notable addition of the 100 gigabit Ethernet interface. Block RAM now totals to 132 megabits. There's also a DDR4 interface that runs at 2400 megabits per second. This is a picture of the logic cell in the Ultrascale FPGA family. It is very similar to the Series 7 logic cell with a six input LUT and two flip flops with intervening carry logic. However, there are eight of these cells in a single logic slice instead of four as there was in the Series 7. When used as distributed RAM, these LUTs are more capable, providing up to 64 bits of RAM per LUT, up to 512 bits per slice. In a type M slice, the LUTs can also provide 32 bits of shift register each. 
You can find up-to-date information about all Xilinx FPGAs at www.xilinx.com slash products slash silicon devices slash FPGA. Recall the 4-bit comparator. How many comparator bits can be implemented in a LUT? In the ultra-scale architecture, the 6-input LUT will handle 3 bits of comparators, so wider comparators can be made with less delay. How many full adders can be made in an ultra-scale logic cell? Given there are two outputs, each cell should be able to easily generate a full adder per cell using the standard approach. This is also true of the carry look-ahead approach, which provides faster performance. In this video, we have learned Xilinx offers several large FPGA families, including the Artex 7, Kentex 7, and Vertex 7, as well as the Kentex Ultra Scale and Vertex Ultra Scale. These are large devices with up to 5 million logic cells. Speed has increased greatly with these large FPGAs, with internal clock trees running up to 850 MHz and transceivers at 30 gigabits per second, with aggregate bandwidth to 3.66 terabits per second. Xilinx large FPGAs are rich in added hard IP blocks, which include memory, PLLs, DSP, PCIe, generation 1, 2, and 3 transceivers, 100 gigabit Ethernet interfaces, and even 12-bit ADCs in some cases.